Hi guys, I think I'm live. Right, who have we got? Laura, how you doing? I think Creaky's just finished, so he possibly could be here. Gary, Isla White, how you doing? How many got? Wow, 442. AB Science, cool. How you doing? So, hey guys, hope you're all well. Um, it's obviously a bit of a difficult time at the moment, but we're all trying to do our best. I hope you're all safe. I hope you're all well. Um, and I thought we'd do a little something just to pass the time and, and have a bit of fun and test the old grey matter, as it were. And yes, I'm in my pyjamas, uh, in case anyone was wondering. Uh, 694, nice. Okay, so hopefully you're all here because you are going to try and compete in the Quiz World Cup. Um, <laughs> Mandelbot set, everyone says this all the time about needing slow mode it's purely because the amount of numbers in the chat slow mode is on at 90 seconds and that is because of the nature of what we're doing so no one can repeat answers so slow mode is on 90 seconds so you can't repeat after 90 seconds um so yeah you're here to have a go at my quiz so this is a quiz that i have designed i've written um they're, they're topics that interest me, so hopefully they interest you as well. Hi, Curry. How are you doing? So the, the general idea is uh, we've got four rounds. Uh, we've got science. Had to have science first, obviously. Uh, we've got geography, second round. We've got historical maths, which is a, a, a round I invented. And fourth round is sport or sporting legends. So the way it's going to work is I'm going to ask a question. So each round has 10 questions except for round three, the historical maths, which has only got six questions because it's a little bit tougher to figure out. So I'm going to ask the questions and I'll ask one at a time. And once I've asked the question, it's down to you guys. So every single one of you in chat is in play. You're all playing and hopefully you're all representing a country. Now that doesn't matter if it's your country you're born in, the country you're living in, as long as you are representing a country, then we are good. Uh, for argument's sake, I know for a fact, or I'm pretty sure that if you're in the UK, then you would rather be uh, known to be from either Scotland, England, Wales, or Northern Ireland. So um, you don't have to put UK or Britain, you can put your uh, country as if we were playing football so if it was me I'd be putting England I think you would all prefer that anyway um, AB science <laughs> oh funny you can do if you want you can if you want um, so when I when I ask the question you guys have got to answer as quick as you can and I will take the first answer that I see in chat the first correct answer that is followed by your country. So the way I want you to answer is answer dash country. All right. I'll take the first person to answer correctly with a country afterwards and you will get the point for your country. And we'll keep score on the little chalkboard um, as we go. Um, so any answer that we get without a country won't qualify for a point so there has to be a country so we know we can to uh we can give it to to the, the correct country right i think that's all of the rules um and obviously i understand that there are some countries at a disadvantage right now because they are in the middle of the night or early more hours of the morning so they can't represent themselves but i had to do it sometime there was always going to be um, there was always going to be a time where some people weren't going to be able to enter. So if you're ready, how many we got? We've got 1,080 watching. Brilliant. Um, I'm, I'm not, well, I am. I'm a little bit biased. Hopefully England wins. Um, but you never know. You some, 
you're a clever lot, so and you're all from all over the place. Um, if you want to know roughly the uh, subscriber numbers in terms of country, about 35% of the 298,000 subscribers are from the US, about 20% from the UK, and I think it's Australia, Germany, Canada after that. So it's heavily weighted towards um, America. Buffing troubles, AB Science. Okay. I'll lower the bit rate a bit. I'll just check quickly before we carry on. Okay. Right, okay. If for every uh, for whatever reason something happens and you can't hear the question, just say I will repeat the question. So, if we're all ready, uh, all 1,100 100 of you, we will start with round one and science and question one. Remember, the answer needs to be followed by the country you're representing in order for that country to gain a point. Okay, here we go. Round one, question one. The Schmidt pain index is a pain scale that rates the bites or stings of an insect. But which species of ant is number one on that index that has a bite so painful it's said to feel like being shot? There's question one. So I'm looking for the answer. The first one to answer with the correct, with the country straight away. And we do have someone, MH Chopper 4. MH Chopper 4, you were the first person to get it right with bullet ant. So that is an early point for USA. Well done uh, to you. Yes, correct answer was bullet ant. So let me just update this. Okay, excellent works. So bullet and USA gets one point. Good stuff. Right, question number two. The speed of light is approximately 300 million meters per second, but how long does it take for light from the sun to reach the planet Mars to the closest minute? How long does it take the light from the sun to reach Mars to the closest minute? Keep an eye on the chat. Oh, unlucky Joseph. Oh, we've got a winner. Ilari, Ilari Priyajavi, I think, uh, is correct with 13 minutes and he is from Finland. Well played. Point for Finland. Excellent work. 13 minutes from the sun to Mars. Right, question number three. I'd like you to please fill in the missing part of the taxonomic rank. So we've got kingdom, phylum, class, blank, family, genus, species. So I'm looking for the blank. Kingdom, phylum, class, blank, family, genus, species. Looking for that missing taxonomic class. Good point, Tommy. I've got to wait 90 seconds. <laughs> uh, Nathan Sharp, well done. You were the first person to answer correctly with the with the country. And you are from England. Whee. Maybe I'll lower the um I'll lower the slow mo to 60 seconds. That way you get more of a chance to get your answer in. Uh, let's do that quickly now. I'll put 45. So it's 45 seconds. That should be enough.
There we go. 45 seconds. Okay, cool. Um, so we've got USA 1, Finland 1 and England 1. Good start. Okay, let's move on to question number four in the science round. This is, uh, you should be able to get this one fairly quickly, so fingers on your keyboards. Question four then, which element of the periodic table has the symbol W? Which element of the periodic table has the symbol W? And there we go, Christopher Boule, well done. No, no, Louis P, well done. Uh, it's tungsten, you were both from France anyway. Uh, so the correct answer is tungsten, well done. France get a point too. Good stuff. Four different countries, four good answers, well done. Uh, yes, the answer was uh, tungsten the periodic table with the symbol W. Okay, question number five now on the science round. I'll wait a couple more seconds. Yes, it is major fast scrolling. Unfortunately, that's just the numbers in the chat, um, but I'm keeping an eye on it and I'm getting the first one that answers, so we're all good. Okay, question number five. Uh, how many officially recognized constellations are there? How many officially recognized constellations are there? A lot. <laughs> Good try, Abby Science. Okay, that was really quick. AM, AM from the USA, got that right. There are 88, 88 officially recognized constellations. So USA take the lead again. Well done, AM. A uh, lot of answers there. Uh, ranging from 27, 12, 250, 5,000, wow. Loads of answers there, but yes, the correct answer is 88 constellations. Banana peaches, thank you very much. One. <laughs> One, brilliant. Not No, not 666. Okay, well done, USA. Um, you are now head and shoulders above Finland, England, and France. Let's move on uh, to question number six. Here we go. What is the third most abundant gas in Earth's atmosphere? The third most abundant gas in Earth's atmosphere. Okay, I'm going to keep an eye on the chat so you can get it first. Uh, helium, oxygen, helium, hydrogen, nitrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, helium. Uh, helium. John Middleton. Well done, John Middleton, with the correct answer of argon. Argon is the third most abundant gas in Earth's, um, Earth's atmosphere. John Middleton got it correct, and he is from Spain. Well done, John. Okay. Excellent stuff. Yes, so obviously it is nitrogen first, then oxygen, and then argon, the third most abundant gas. Right, let's move on to question number seven. The great apes, so the great apes consist of four groups, chimpanzee, orangutan, gorilla, and which other species? Chimpanzee, orangutan, gorilla, and which other species?
Barry on that was mega quick. Barry on gets it straight out the gate. Human, human is the fourth member of the great apes family, um, and again it's USA. God, you guys are really quick. So USA are taking a good lead there, three one. Barry on, well done. Casual spaceman, don't know and don't give a monkey's Northern Ireland. Dear, oh dear. Just because it's not space questions. <clears throat> so yes, human is the fourth member of the of the great apes. Right. Question number, yes, Barry on, you won. Question number eight. Here we go. Oh, this could be a good one for you, uh, casual spaceman. In fact, if you don't get this one, I'll be very disappointed. Right. Question number eight. What was the name given to the command module of Apollo 9? What was the name given to the command module of Apollo 9? Apollo Quite a few of you said Eagle, not Eagle. Not Falcon, not Aquarius, not Luna, not Columbia, not Dave, not Fred, not Columbus, uh, not Eagle, not, Na not Nathan. Come on, guys. No, not Gary, not Fred, not Frederick, not Snoopy. Mandelbrot set, well done. It was called Gumdrop. Gumdrop. So USA, again, they've got a commanding lead now. Four points to USA. Well done, Mandelbrot set. Yes, the answer was Gumdrop. Uh, did Casual Spaceman even have a go there? I don't know if he did. Uh, he did, but he was too late. Okay, two questions left in this round. Um, we'll go for question number nine, and it sh this should be one that you should guys get pretty quickly. Uh, here we go, question number nine. Which mammal has the longest gestation period? Which mammal has the longest gestation period? Okay, here we go. Uh, I think that is Mitch Carpenter. Mitch Carpenter, well done, elephant. And you have got a point for Canada. Someone said the slow mode is still too slow. Do I need to dial it back to 30 seconds? Just let me know, guys, if you th if you think 45 seconds is still too slow, and I'll trim it back. Okay, cool. Looks like most people have got it right. Okay, so USA still in the lead. Four points to them. Finland, England, France, Spain, and Canada, each with a point. Uh, respectively. Let's move on to question number 10 in the science round. Here we go. Which British scientist was knighted not for his scientific discoveries but for his work as master of the Royal Mint? Which British scientist was knighted not for his scientific discoveries but for his work with, with the Royal Mint? Okay, Oliver Jambor, well done. Oh no, sorry, sorry. I thought it was you, but it wasn't. It was Epic Ponage, 117, who got that right. It was Isaac Newton. And I'm afraid to say, guys, it is again the USA who have taken a commanding lead. 
Well done. So after round one, USA have five points. Finland, England, France, Spain and Canada each have a point. So if you've just joined us, um, the way that you need to get your answer is to place your answer first, followed by your country second in order to get a point for your country. So. Well done, guys. Good round. USA, come on. Seriously, you need to to EU four. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You could you could class yourselves as EU if you wanted to. USA out there, so you you guys have really got to uh, try and pull this back. Let's move on to round two and geography. Now I realise if if the answer is a country here, this could get quite confusing. So make sure you get your answer in first and your question uh, and your country in second. Right here we go. Question one in geography. What is the largest metropolitan area in the world that does not border a body of water? What is the largest metropolitan area in the world that does not border a body of water? So basically the largest city in the world that is not next to water. Wakanda. Uh, not Beijing, not Russia, not Tokyo, not Delhi, not Mexico, not LA, not Russia, not Tokyo, not the Vatican. We've got we've got a winner, guys. Vuskor, Vuskor, with the correct answer, and he he or she lives in the country that this is from, South Africa. The answer is Johannesburg, Johannesburg in South Africa. So well done to you. For getting South Africa on the scoreboard. Okay, let's make that a bit smaller. Right, good answer, well done. Uh, Johannesburg there in South Africa. Let's move on to question number two. Which country has the smallest number of people per square kilometre? Which country has the smallest number of people per square kilometre. Straight out the gate there. Um, I can't pronounce your name, but you said Mongolia and you're from France. So yes, the answer is Mongolia for that one. Um, Tommy's just made a good point there. Um, if you guys are seeing things come up before others, possibly, I can see the chat as it comes in real time. So the first one that comes through is the one that I see. So don't worry about what's being displayed in the chat. You see the one that I see is the is the actual first one. Okay. Right, question number three now. Here we go. How many countries does Russia share a border with? How many countries does Russia share a border with? That's question number three. Slayer King. Slayer King 003, straight out the bat there. 14, 14 countries, and again, it's USA. Well played. So 14 countries. Good job. USA extend their lead further. Okay, question number four. 22% of the River Nile runs through which country? 22% of the River Nile runs through which country? Yep, we've got an answer straight away. Uh, Bizik TM. Correct answer is Egypt. Well done to you. And you are from Poland. So it's another new country on the board. Oh, well done.
Yes, 22% of the River Nile runs through Poland. Uh, Poland? No, it doesn't. It runs through Egypt. Okay, let's move on to question number five. Um, how many time zones does France adhere to? So the you have to um, take into account here any overseas territories that France has. So how many time zones does France adhere to? Uh, okay, quite a few answers straight out here. They're quite low. You need to think more. And I think we've got an answer. Yes, we have. It is from Red Cosmos Devil from Ethiopia with the correct answer of 12. 12 time zones. Well done to you. Uh, you have got Ethiopia on the board. Well done. Excellent stuff. Still USA in the lead. Okay. Let's go uh, move on to question number six. San Marino and the Vatican City are both landlocked by only one country. Which is the only other country in the world that can say this? So San Marino and Vatican City are both landlocked by one country, which is Italy. What's the only other country in the world that can say that they are landlocked by one country? A lot of people are saying Italy. Maybe they've misunderstood the question. And yes, we have an answer. And uh, it is... Lane Cruiser from Germany, well done to you. The correct answer was Lesotho. Lesotho, and that is bordered or landlocked by South Africa. So Germany, you have now taken a position on the board. Well done. Oh, run out of room here. Okay. Right, well done so far. Still USA in the lead. Question number seven. What is the largest city that sits on two continents? What is the largest city that sits on two continents? Wow, that was fast. That was really fast. Tarkin 1995, correct, from Switzerland with the correct answer of Istanbul. So, well done to you, Switzerland. Switzerland gets to go on the board as well. Okay, loads of countries at one point. France with two and USA with six. Yeah, Istanbul sits on Asia and Europe. Okay, question number eight. What percentage of the total population of Earth live in the Southern Hemisphere? What percentage of the total population of Earth live in the Southern Hemisphere? Um, straight away, good answer. Valerie Huzz, 10% is the correct answer. Only 10% of the Earth's population live in the southern hemisphere and you are from ukraine well done well done another new country on the board okay good stuff right question number nine what is the only city in America, excluding those in Alaska, where you can drive south and reach Canada? The only city in America, excluding any in Alaska, where you can drive south and reach Canada. Okay, we had a good answer there. Nathan Sampson said Detroit, but he didn't put his country but then Slayer King 003 came straight in after him with the correct answer of Detroit. And yep, you guessed it, he's from USA. 
This is a, a good performance from the Americans. Still plenty of time to catch up. Right, last question in, in the geography round. Question number 10. Only two countries in America, in South America, sorry, only two countries in South America do not border Brazil. Which two countries are they? Only two countries in South America don't border Brazil. Which two countries are they? Okay, let's have a look. Remember, I'm looking for two countries, two countries. And I think we've got a winner. Yes, we do. It's Mauricio Colmenares from Argentina who got the correct answer of Ecuador and Chile. Well done to you. And another new country goes on our list. Argentina for the point. Awesome. Well done. Right, that's question. That is round two done with. Um, really good so far. Some of you have done some really quick answers. Really, really impressive. That means you haven't been googling it. Right. So scores on the boards, scores on the doors. USA with a commanding lead there of seven. France are in second with two points. And then Finland, England, Spain, Canada, South Africa, Poland, Ethiopia, Germany, Switzerland, Ukraine and Argentina all with one point apiece. There are still 16 points up for grabs, so it's still wide open. Right. The third round is historical maths. So bear with me here. The way to do this round is I'm going to give you two events in history. I'm going to say one event and then I'm going to say the second event. And your answer has to come as a number. So I could say an event which will have a year. Let's say, for example, the year is 2004. And the second event will have a year. Let's say, for example, that's 1652. And then you have to minus the second year from the first year to give yourself a number. I hope that makes sense. I'm sure as the round progresses, it will make more sense. So I'll say one world event and I'll say minus the next world event. And then those two numbers, you minus one from the other. So basically you're subtracting one year from another. So the first question might be a bit of a, uh, uh, yep. Mr. Diablo, get your calculators ready indeed, because you probably will need calculators this. I'm not expecting really quick answers from this unless you you straight away know the years off the top of your head and you can do the maths off the top of your head. OK, there's only six questions in this round. Here we go. Question number one. I'll be keeping an eye on the chat. So the year the Berlin Wall fell, the year the Berlin Wall fell minus the year of the Battle of Waterloo. So the year the Berlin Wall fell, take that year and take away the year that the, of the Battle of Waterloo and it should give you a number and that number will be your answer. And we've got a winner and that was actually really quick. So the answer is 174. Uh, it's again... I can't pronounce the name, someone 84, uh, from France. The answer is 174 because the year the Berlin Wall fell was 1989. The year of the Battle of Waterloo was 1815. So it's 1989 minus 1815, which gives you 174. Well done to you. Well done to France, who have gained another point. Could be France that catch USA. Who knows? Right, hopefully that makes sense and everyone gets that. So we can move on to the second question. Um, and we'll see how it goes. OK, question number two. Here we go. The year the Titanic sank, the year that the Titanic sank minus the year that Queen Elizabeth I took the throne. So the year the Titanic sunk, take away the year that Queen Elizabeth I took the throne. You might have to Google some of that. Should you give, should give you a number. OK, 
I can just imagine people frantically Googling the numbers. Still waiting. Oh, someone was really close there. MW, you were quite close. Oh, oh, I think I've seen it. I think I've seen it. Uh, yeah, people have started figuring it out. And the first person to get it right was... Uh, I want to make sure I get the right person. Yeah, first person was Bernard von Schulman from Canada. Well done. The answer was 354. Canada, you get yourself a point. This is really testing the, uh, the math skills and your history skills. So the um, year the Titanic sunk was 1912, and the year Queen Elizabeth first took the throne was 1558, giving you an answer of 354. Well done if you got that right. Okay, question number four. Three, here we go. The year that the film Grease was released with John Travolta and Olivia Newton John, take away the year the Great Plague of London started. So, the year that the film Grease was released, take away the year that the Great Plague of London started. Okay, let's have a look. Jan Opdal, Jan Opdal, Jorn Opdal from Norway. Well done. 313 was the answer I was looking for. Uh, Greece was released in 1978. And the Great Plague of London started in 1665. I don't think we've got Norway yet, have we? No. Good. Well done, Norway. Got yourself on the leaderboard. So still USA in the lead with seven, France with three who are second, and Canada with two who are third. Well done. Right. Let's go. Um, uh, yes, I can keep track of the chat. Yep. I'm using the chat from the um, YouTube studio, which I can scroll up and down on so I can see who gets the uh, the first answer. Okay, question number four. Here we go. Calculators at the ready. Um, the year the First World War ended minus the year the Declaration of Independence was signed. So the year that the First World War ended, take away the year the Declaration of Independence was signed. Looking for a number there. Away you go. Wow, that was quick. That was quick. Someone knows their history pretty well. It's the person who I can't pronounce beginning with P, 84. The answer I was looking for was 142, again from France. So that's taken France to four points. Um, the First World War ended in 1918, and the Declaration of Independence was signed in 1776. So 1918, take away uh, 1776, is 142. Well done. Right. Oh. Question number five. The year of the first World Cup. So the year of the first football FIFA World Cup. Take away the year Romeo and Juliet was originally published. So the year of the first World Cup. Minus the year Romeo and Juliet was originally published. Okay, some pretty quick answers there. Nothing correct yet. Uh, I think we've got a winner. And I think it's Mitch Carpenter again. 333 was the answer I'm looking for. Well done, Mitch. Well done for Canada. Another point for you. So, yes, the First World Cup was in 1930, 
and Romeo and Juliet was originally published in 1597. Take one away from the other and you get 333. Right, the last question of this round. So really France and Canada are in with a shout here to catch America. Um, question six then, we want the year that the first ever iPhone came out. The year that the first ever iPhone came out minus the year that Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone. So the year the first iPhone came out, take away the year that Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone. What number do you get? Wow, a lot of quick answers here. Has anyone got it right? Has anyone got it right? Uh, no one yet. Oh, Duncan, very, very close, Duncan. I don't think anyone's got it yet. Come on, one of you must have got it. Yes. Yuri. Well done. Answer is 131. And Yuri is representing Antarctica. Well done. Possibly trying to trigger the flat earthers there on that one. Good. Okay. So round three is done. And the scores are as follows. USA in the lead with seven. France are second with four. And Canada are third with three. And then we've got a host of countries on one. Um, we've got 10 questions left. 10 points up for grabs. So there could be a country that's not even on there who could still win. Here we go. Question number, uh, sorry. Round number four uh, is... Sporting legends. Chad, Antarctica is not a country. Correct. But I'm putting it on there in the hope that it triggers some flat earthers. So what are you going to do? Right. Round four then is sport. And question number one is as follows. Michael Jordan has won more NBA Finals MVPs than anyone else in history. But who is the only player to ever win it as a rookie? Who is the only player to ever win it as a rookie? The NBA Finals MVP. Not Scotty Pippen, not Kareem, not Kobe. Not LeBron. Hoingbrot, 1.7. Well done from Germany, who got the correct answer there, of Magic Johnson. Well done. Magic Johnson's the only person to win it, ever win the MVP, NBA Finals MVP as a rookie. Germany, well done. You move to two. Right. Question number two. The Golf Grand Slam is the name given to four calendar year tournaments. The Open the PJ Championship, the US Open, and which other tournament? So the Golf Grand Slam consists of the Open, the PJ Championship, the US Open, and which other tournament? Wow, that was quick. That was really quick. That was Bobby Swish from America who got the correct answer of the Masters. Well done, Bobby. You've taken America to eight points. Well done. Question number three. Roger Federer has won the most men's Wimbledon titles ever with 12. The most women's titles won is also 12, but by whom? So Wimbledon, Roger Federer has won 12. The most won by a woman is also 12, but who was that lady?
Not Serena. Oh. Uh, at least someone got this right from England. So the answer is... Uh, oh, no. Oh, yeah, it was England. Whew. Okay. It, Arthur... Arthur, fuck's sake... Uh, got the correct answer. Martina Navratilova. 12 Wimbledon titles. Well done, Arthur, for getting England another point. Good job. Right, question number four. Which country has got to the final of the World Cup the most number of times but have never won it in their history? Which country has got to the final of the FIFA World Cup, the Football World Cup, the most number of times, but has never, ever won it. Uh, good shout early on there. Who was that? That was... Is that Arthur again? Is that Arthur again? No, he was pipped by GonFV2104 from Spain, who got the correct answer of Netherlands. Netherlands have been to the final, the World Cup final, three times and have never won it. So a point for Spain. Well done. I think France and Canada might be the only people who can catch you, I say now. Question number five. The Six Nations is an annual rugby tournament that contains England, Scotland, Ireland, Wales, France, and which other country? The Six Nations, the Rugby Six Nations, is England, Scotland, Wales, France, Ireland, and which other country? Arthur, that was really quick. Arthur again, I'll call him Arthur F now. Again from England, got it right with the answer of Italy. So England moves to three points. Well done, Arthur. Yes, Italy are the, are the sixth side I was looking for there in the Six Nations. Right. Question number six. The longest standing track record is the women's what? The longest standing athletics track record is the women's what? Four hundred no, sixteen hundred no, one hundred no, four hundred no, two hundred no. W. J. Koopman, well done. Uh, oh no, no, Silver Fern, Silver Fern Kiwi, well done. It was the eight hundred meters, and you are from New Zealand. Point for New Zealand. Well done. I think USA have got it now, but we'll we'll carry on regardless. Yeah, eight hundred meter record, which has been held for I think since like the eighties. Okay, question number seven. This might not be good for you guys, America. It depends how much you like snooker or not. I'd like you to calculate the following snooker break. Red, green, red, black, red, black, red, pink, red. So I'll calculate the following break in snooker. Red, green, red, black, red, black, red, pink, and red. Oh, we've got an answer. It's 28. Well done, Martin Pendry. 28, he has managed to obtain the first point for Wales. Well done. Well done, Martin. Good job. Right, question number eight. Here we go. Any boxing fans in the house? Uh, in which weight division did Muhammad Ali win his Olympic gold medal? In which weight division did Muhammad Ali win his Olympic gold medal?
And we do have an answer. Loads of people going for heavyweight, which is the obvious. But when he was in the Olympics, he was only a light heavyweight. A light heavyweight. So that means the winner is... Um, oh, hang on. Lee Collison. Lee, Lee Collison from Scotland. Well done. Oh, no, Les White, sorry. Both from Scotland anyway. So Scotland get themselves a point. Uh, are you on there yet, Scotland? No. Yeah, so he wasn't quite as heavy in his early career when he was, when he was competing in the Olympics. So he was a light heavyweight. Right. Two questions to go. Question number nine. Uh, Elliot Kipchoge is the current marathon world record holder, but at which marathon did he break the world record? At which marathon did he break the world record? Elliot Kipchoge, marathon world record holder. That was really quick. Uh, Nutlow from South Africa, straight in there with Berlin. The Berlin Marathon, that was where uh, Elliot Kipchoge broke the marathon world record. So South, South Africa moved to two points. Well done. So the final question, question number 10. So this should be good for you uh, American fans or anyone who likes uh, American football. So question number 10, the words commissioner, Wilson, and what other phrase have been printed on every single Super Bowl game football made by Wilson since day one? since day one so the words commissioner wilson and what other phrase have been printed on every single super bowl ball since day one loads of answers here nothing yet uh Oh, I think we've got one. I think we've got one. Uh, I'm pretty sure we have. Yes, we have. Linda, Linda Keck, made in USA. Made in USA is the other phrase. And you are also from USA, which makes you, or it means you give USA another point, which means they get nine points. And that is an absolute crushing from USA. Absolute crushing. Well done, guys. So in first position, we've got USA. In second position, we have France with four points. And then joint third is England way, and Canada. Um, so well done, guys. Thank you, Brute Force. Thank you very much. Um, so this was just kind of a, a trial. I didn't know if it would work. Uh, I, I understand that there was probably a bit of issue with the chat in terms of catching up but I promise you I was I was keeping up with the ones that did come through first through my YouTube studio rather than the chat on the channel video um, so if if everyone enjoyed that then I might do another one same time next week um, if it keeps the boredom at bay you can all swat up um, and if, if we keep doing it then we'll rack up a few wins um, the country that wins the most and you know we'll, we'll we'll crown a champion we'll call usa the champions for the moment um as much as as i'm gonna get it from team skeptic so well done well done usa nine points uh we'll give you we'll give you the trophy for the moment and uh all being well i'll do another one next week and uh we'll we'll carry on doing it and try and get through this together so well done a um, couple of things I want to say before I finish. Uh, first off, um, if any of you got any children that need help with um, science and maths, a few YouTubers and I have clubbed together and we've created a channel called the Core Learning Network. The Core Learning Network. Um, so if you if you search that on YouTube, um, I haven't done anything yet, but AB Science is involved. Um, Conspiracy Cats is involved and a good friend of mine Chris who does a, who's got a great math channel he's involved as well um, so have a look at that if you if you get the chance Core Learning Network is the channel name 
And secondly, please, please don't forget April the 1st. It is not, it is not a April Fool's joke. April the 1st is the first day that the Simon Dan show is coming out. The first episode is out on April the 1st. Really excited for that. Um, six episodes in the first season. See how it goes. Um, and hopefully it will carry on and we'll, we'll carry on after that. But yes, April the 1st, Wednesday. Keep an eye out um, for the first episode of the Simon Dan show. Thanks very much. See you all later. Have a good one. Stay safe. Stay indoors. Isolate. Be good. Bye-bye.